G'day guys, thanks for stopping by. We're standing in front of the caravan because this weekend's video is about the caravan. This weekend's video is going to be about the install of the eBay 3 kilowatt diesel heater. And I know there's been lots of questions on forums, uh, there have been people posting up, there's been people getting them. I did plenty of research, watched just about every video I could find on YouTube that was related to these diesel heaters. And based on the experience from people that I'd seen in forums and just the general stuff that I'd seen on YouTube and you know, from research otherwise, I was happy to roll the dice and buy one. So today's video is going to be taking you through the install process and what it took me to actually get this diesel heater in. At the end of the video, we'll touch on my experience thus far. I've had it in for probably about two weeks now and done a little bit of testing here and there. I'll take you through some stats as far as power usage goes and just my general experience in using the actual heater itself. I'm really excited about this one. Been looking forward to it for a little while. And I've had a few people who knew that I purchased the heater and have told me to hurry up and get my finger out get it installed and get the video up so they can have a look because they're interested in purchasing one themselves and for tim and steve here's the install of the diesel heater no 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 stop 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 we're not going to go through the complete install of the diesel heater because it takes too long i've already started editing it it's over an hour long now if you're interested in that put a comment down below and i'll put that together and i'll finish editing that and i'll put it up what we're going to do instead is just talk you through the process of installing the diesel heater, throw up some clips of all the footage that we've got when we did the install, make it short, about 20 minutes, half an hour. So kick back, relax, let's go and have a look at this thing. Clown. So if we walk straight into the caravan, you're going to see I've got the cafe style seating, two 130 amp hour batteries over there, solar charger, all that sort of business. I was looking at installing it under this seat over here. I figured that was going to put it nice and close to the batteries just there, minimise cable runs, etc. When I went to go in here, it wasn't going to fit because there's a wheel arch just behind there, so it wasn't going to fit. I did consider going diagonally and bringing the vent just out the front here. Unfortunately, space was still at a minimum, it was going to impact on the drawer and not something I, I wanted to do. It was also going to mean that I was going to have to cut out some of this section here to bring the vent out and just something I didn't want to do. I considered under the oven here at the front. Hey, get out of it. I wasn't willing to give away that space as far as storage goes for the insole of the heater. I also did consider under the bed. The bed itself does lift up. I wasn't really comfortable with having the heater sitting under the bed. Uh, I'm sure it's fine and I've, I've seen other people install it there, just not something that I wanted to do. Looking around for other options, I've got this nice cabinet here that has the fridge installed into it. That's the new 12 volt fridge install video up in the top left hand corner. If you're interested in why and how I swapped that over for the three way fridge. Underneath that cabinet, there's a small little door. Now some of this panelling has been chipped etc but uh, just the way it is, it's seen better days, it's an old caravan. So what we did, we went with the install under that cabinet there. Now it's not ideal because obviously we've got the fridge trying to cool up top and the heater trying to heat down the bottom. That's the platform that the fridge is actually sitting on, so you see there's plenty of room there. Now one of my friends when he came over um, asked me if I should be leaving this door open for the intake fan here. But what you can actually note is right over the back there is a hole in that top right hand corner and I can actually feel cool air coming out of this space now. But there's a hole up in that top right hand corner. I did used to have a three-way fridge in here and if we go to the outside that hole is just inside this vent so there's no concerns with that being a closed space creating a vacuum whatever that's going to be able to suck cool air in from the outside in through that hole into the heater and then through into the cab. It got a little further this way than I probably should have. I probably should have brought it back a bit. It definitely made it a little bit difficult to get this pipe in. The vent is right there, obviously the heater's right there. We've only got a section, you know, three, maybe four inches long where it has to meet. So it was a bit of a challenge getting all that piece together, but we got it done. And on the other side, we've got our outlet vent. You can see that just there, just coming from the heater itself. And if we come up from the bottom where the unit is installed itself, there's our fridge. When we come around to the side of the fridge, you're going to say this is where our control panel is. Now this was probably the biggest part of the job. Down through the cabinet with the fridge, drilled a hole in here somewhere uh, in the bottom of the fridge platform just to pull that wiring out. Now just routing that wire uh, in through here and down at the bottom was a pain in the backside. It took me about half a dozen goes to get it. What I did, I used some plastic tubing that I had from the install of the diff breathers on the car. 
Again, you can look up in that right hand corner for that install video. And then I've got some whipper snipper cord and push the whipper snipper cord down through that plastic tube and then take the wire off to the whipper snipper cord and pull it up through that hole. Uh, a couple of times it fell off, had to go back through, didn't quite work. So it was a bit of a pain in the backside, but in the end. So it's a good location because I can reach it from the bed, which I'm currently sitting on now, or alternatively, there's the rest of the cab and the seating area so it can be reached easily from there as well. So it's pretty much central to the caravan, uh, good location. Uh, so as far as the unit goes itself, pretty straightforward. This is an OK button, this is a settings button, up and down, on and off. So if we want to change some settings, just tap this button up in the cor left hand corner and it's just going to cycle you through, it's like setting an old watch. Now just from the standby setting, hitting the OK button will take you through the temperature inside the caravan. Now this always tends to read a little bit hot, that's saying 18 degrees. My fridge thermometer here is saying 14 degrees and I trust this one a little bit more. Now there's a couple of options here, you can either set the power setting by controlling the frequency of the pump, which is what I've got it set on. Uh, this is the mode that I prefer to use. Alternatively, you can press these two buttons at the top and what that will allow you to do is to make control through a temp setting. Now, I haven't been really happy with the way it's been working like this. Uh, a couple of times I've sort of set it, uh, it's got to that temp and then the heater's just turned off altogether rather than maintaining that temperature. If I stay in this mode, which is effectively the manual mode, what I can do is I can control the speed of the fuel pump which is effectively just like a, a high low setting really. I tend to put that around about 1.3, 1.2, something like that because I know once the, once the heater heats up, it'll basically go back to that setting which is its lowest setting or near to its lowest setting which uses the lowest amount of power whilst it's actually going which is around about the half an amp. So that's why I do that. So in, in a situation where I'm camping, I'll be out sitting around a campfire or something like that. I'll come in probably about an hour early Turn this on, let it run, put it on its lower setting, and by the time I get in, after about an hour, it's going to be well up over 20 degrees. So it's going to be more than warm enough just leaving it on that lower setting, and I'm only using about half an amp. The amount of diesel it uses is minimal, so you can just leave it running forever. We'll turn it on, and we'll just give you a bit of a listen. When you first turn it on, this is when it's going to use the most power. You're going to see the little icons and stuff starting to flash. This screen will actually tell you what's going on. So you can see here that the fan's going, the glow plugs come on, take air in and exhaust out. You can also see the voltage of your battery. So we've got 13.2, so we've got plenty. It is quite an overcast day outside, so we've got minimal solar coming in, but it's gonna be more than enough. You will see it does become a reasonable load uh, during the heat up process when you first turn it on, but it is only for a few minutes. And as you can see, our panels really aren't bringing much, if anything, in uh, because it is very, very overcast. We're expecting a heap of rain today. So just as far as this EP Ever controller goes, if you're trying to understand what you're actually seeing on the screen, this is what we're taking as far as the load goes. So this is what the controller is outputting to whatever you've got connected up to it. In this instance, it's just the heater. So 7.7 .7 amps is going out to the heater, and that's what it's using. We are making 0.8 of an amp coming from our solar panels there, but it is an MPPT. So what it's doing, it's making the conversion, it's 13 volts is going to the battery, and the minus 5.1, that is the difference between the power that we're making from over here, what we're sending out to our load, and what we're either putting in or taking out of our battery. So you'll see the minus in front, so that means currently we are pulling 4.8 amps out of our battery. Now our fuel pump has just kicked on, which is indicated by the little icon here of the fuel pump. You will hear it ticking, and it will tick in time with these two flashing lights. If you turn this frequency up, you'll be able to see these two will flash just a little bit quicker, and that'll be in time with the clicking or the pulsing of your fuel pump. So our glow plug is still on, so we're still gonna be pulling large amount of power. So she's starting to ramp up now. This is the highest current pull we're gonna see. We're up around the 10 amps. It's usually up around the nine there or so. So the current usage reduces greatly once the glow plug turns off. So see we're down to about 3 amps, 3.3. And you can see on the screen here, the glow plug symbol has gone out. You will hear that that's ramping up, that fan's really, really going, and that's what's pulling that current. Once that gets to 10, that fan will slow down, and that's all that's gonna be pulling that half an amp. Now one thing to note, and I have seen others have this issue, sometimes I get quite a bit of noise, just like that, out of this end. That's because obviously the fan is touching the housing. Now if I take that cover off and just push down on here, that noise stops. So that fan is actually making contact with the outside of this case. Now I have seen others have that issue. 
So we'll, we'll get in at some point, we'll see where that's making contact and we'll sort that out. So now the heater's up to temp, you'll see that it's clicking away nicely at 1.4. We can turn that down to 1.2. Uh, which is its lowest setting. It is going to be using the least amount of power and that just chugs away uh, and warms the van up quite nicely. Keep in mind this is a 17 foot van, 14 foot living space, 17 foot to the drawbar. Uh, so that's roughly the size of the van. You can see we do have a pop top van. That rear window was open. Front window is open as well. But I have found that I can be in the caravan uh, and have the windows open or have the pop top up and have some of those windows open at the top. Uh, and this is still more than capable of keeping this warm, uh, even on sort of a low to medium setting. Just to give you another look at the power uses that we're seeing at the moment. So that's on the 1.2 and that is 0.4 amps. Now if you want to ramp the thing up, you can obviously come over here and just bump it up and you will get used to these settings and what they mean. Now if we turn up the frequency, which is effectively turning up the speed of our fuel pump, you'll see the fan tends to pick up just that little bit as well. And I can hear that pump's going a little bit quicker. And you can see that that's gone up to 0.8 of an amp that we're using now. So it's a little bit higher draw. And it's fluctuating a little bit there. So anywhere between you know, 0 0.5, 0 0.8. Uh, so the lower that setting you use, obviously the lower the setting of the heating, uh, which means it's obviously going to be pulling less power to run that pump and to run that fan. But again, for my usage, I tend to find somewhere around the between the 1.4 uh, and the 1.2 uh, tends to work for me. Now as far as this controller goes, there is you do need to give it a good push uh, to get it to work. If you just pop the buttons, you'll see it doesn't necessarily do something. Um, what you need to do is really push in to get that to engage and to take it to the next stage. So you'll see we're now seeing 13.5 volts of the battery. Uh, that's partially because we're getting some solar input. Uh, but I've also upgraded the wiring that comes over to under the fridge so for, for powering the 12 volt fridge which means that the heat is benefiting from that upgraded wiring as well. But just from a perspective underneath the caravan where we've actually drilled our holes rather than taking out the minimal amount of timber uh, and just leaving the gaps for the holes if I did that uh, the bolts that were on the bottom of the heater itself weren't quite long enough to come through the caravan floor and it's a reasonably thick caravan floor i'm guessing it's probably yeah inch and a half thick maybe two inches thick so going with that larger hole that you'll see there gives me more clearance around the exhaust which is the hottest part of the unit itself and allows me to get those nuts on the bottom of those bolts uh, on the other side of that plate to hold the unit down in place you'll see the exhaust running off here and that's going out near the wheel arch of the caravan. I think I do want to put an extension on that and I'm thinking about turning it around and running it off the front of the drawbar. Here's our air inlet. Uh, now this needs to be ran away from the exhaust. Part of the reason for me wanting to run the exhaust out the front is I want to get some good separation between these two. Obviously this is the intake uh, for the engine itself. In the kit you only get some small length of tube, you're only looking at about a couple of feet of tube of each. Um, so it only allows you a maximum of four foot separation from where the intake is uh, to where the exhaust is. And I think that could be done a little bit better just by extending those. Now you'll see here, this is just our fuel line running over to our fuel pump. Now the reason I've put the fuel pump over here is I wanted it as close as possible to the fuel tank itself. And by putting it over here, it also put it as far away from the bed as possible. I don't take too kindly to noises, especially repetitive noises while I'm trying to sleep. And this pump does it click while it's running. I am going to try and isolate this a little bit better, uh, but you will hear an audible click from within the caravan while this is running. It's not terrible, but I had one of my mates in the caravan. He couldn't hear it. Uh, but I could and his daughter could. So it is there if you've got reasonably sensitive hearing um, or if it's very, very quiet, you're definitely going to hear that. Now, if you're having a look at the instructions, if you have an elevated fuel tank, which I do, the fuel tank is ever so slightly higher than the heating unit itself, so I have an elevated fuel tank. That allows me to have a greater run of fuel line after the fuel pump itself, like I've got in this install. I believe it says in the instructions to have anything up to about eight meters after the fuel pump if you've got an elevated fuel tank. If you don't have an elevated fuel tank, or it's about the same height or lower, as your heating unit itself. I think there's only about two meters or something you've got to play with between the pump and your heating unit. So you're better off putting the pump closer to your heating unit and further away from the fuel tank. So I think it must be more efficient at sucking than it is pushing. This is just up in the corner where we've gone up through a drain hole into the boot. 
and here is our fuel tank at the front. Now the fuel tank itself is easily accessible. Uh, you can see here, I can take the top off the fuel tank uh, and fill it up, just using a standard jerry can with a nozzle on it. That's the reason I went in this corner obviously to minimize the space loss in the boot as well but this one is plastic this is the standard one that comes with the unit itself and i was concerned about putting it on the outside and having it be sun affected now we're in australia and plastic things don't take too kindly in the sun outside in the heat so that was going to age that a lot more quicker than it would if it's in the front of the boot here like this put a piece of timber under that and i'm, I'm just yet to screw it down that's going to be this weekend's job uh, but the idea was for the unit itself to be supported by the timber rather than just those three screws uh, holding up the weight of that you know, 10 litres of fuel bouncing around the caravan while we're driving. So I've just supported the weight with that timber underneath that supports the weight. The three screws literally just need to hold it in place. And down in that corner you'll see there that's where we go out that's our drain hole that takes us underneath the caravan itself. Now as far as noise goes it's not too noisy the noisiest it gets is on startup. Worst case scenario with this unit, regardless of whether it's noise, power consumption, fumes, whatever the case may be, are uh, all for that five minutes or so of startup. Obviously, that's going to vary depending on the temperature outside and how much it needs to warm up. So, the most fumes you're going to see and smell on startup. The most current it's going to draw on startup, about nine amps, give or take. The most noise it is going to make is on startup. Now, that's when those fans are ramping up, your glow plugs going, you know, everything's happening. It gets smelly, it gets a little bit noisy, and it uses a lot of power. It's only going to last for about five minutes, 10 minutes maximum, and then you can turn it back to whatever setting you want. My recommendation for the three kilowatt one here in a 17 foot van is just have it on its lower setting or near enough to its lower setting. If you're only using about half an amp, and in a closed caravan, it'll heat up pretty quickly. Now, as far as concerns for temps uh, being under the fridge itself, obviously I have those. So we're going to get a little thermometer here. Now I've done a review on this little guy, uh, again link in the description up in that top right hand corner and there'll also be a link where I picked this up off eBay, these are real handy, they're around about 10-12 bucks. Now it's been running for about half an hour, so the back of the unit, the intake, 19 degrees, the body itself, 21 degrees, now obviously it's going to get hotter the further we go forward because this is where the heating unit is, 32 there, and this usually gets quite warm here and 38 there. Uh, so it's around about the 40 degrees here at the front. Now you can see that I've got my finger on that and that's not uncomfortable. I can leave it there for quite a while. And to the back of the unit, it's just completely cold. So I'm not too concerned about that. Again, we've got cold air getting pulled in from the back up there and being cycled and the fridge has that exhaust at the back. So I think we're okay there. Another good thing about having it in the cabinet here is obviously access to the unit itself. We do have a fuse block at the back there that runs the fridge and some external lights so that does get in the way a little bit but it's not too bad I can just reach around the back there and get to those if I need to. Now this is outside and you can see there's my exhaust there which is not my ideal situation which is why I want to move that from there because this is my door to the outside and if I've got that open which is highly unlikely that I'm going to be having that door open if it's cold and I've got the heater on but you can see we're close to some external vents so exhaust there, that's the bottom of our door, and obviously if the wind's blowing that way, which I have experienced, if there's a breeze going that blow that way, the exhaust will come out here, go up here, and come straight in the bottom of the door. That is going straight past the door, so I may need to direct that in somewhere else, because we don't want that coming straight back in the door. But this is good actually, having the, having the smoke. We can say where it's going. Obviously that's gonna depend on wind direction. See that's starting to clear up now, so it must be starting to heat up. You say that glow plug is probably shut off and the heat is actually running inside. Just so you know, this is nothing to panic about. This is actually a good test to have a look at the muffler. You can see there's actually fumes coming out the bottom and out the back. So we definitely do need to put a hose clamp on the back deck, coming back out underneath the caravan. This is standard for your first start. Just getting all the air out of the line. sort of cracking and you know, making different noises because it's all settling in because it's heating up. Once it gets running right after the first time it should run nice and clear. Or alternatively exhaust is here straight above those 
and my fridge vents. Now they're typically sealed from the cab itself, but it still, still allows the fumes to get in. So I really want to turn this and run it out the front here. I'm thinking I'm going to just get a piece of uh, aluminium tube uh, and run it out the front and actually probably put the exhaust right out the front off the drawbar so it's away from the cab itself and any way for those fumes to get into the cab. So that's our fuel tank there, the piece of timber that supports the weight of it. It's getting a little bit low, we do need to top it up. I've been topping it up periodically just to see how much fuel we're going through and just to make sure that it's working because I don't want to have to pull it out when it's full. But all is going good. This fuel tank does have a little breather hole on it so it's not going to create a vacuum. Close this up. That fuel tank is protected. Uh, it's protected from the sun, protecting from the elements. Uh, obviously nobody can see a diesel, hit, diesel fuel tank sitting there. Don't want to mess about with it, bugger around with it, give you grief. It's not going to hit by stones. It's not going to have any issues like that. Uh, so I really think that's an ideal install. It's real easy. You know, if you've got a boot, you've probably got drain holes in either corner, like I did. But, you know, if you've got to pop a hole in the bottom, run that fuel line out, no biggie. I think that's definitely the way to go. Thank you to everybody for stopping by. Uh, if you've got any questions regarding the diesel heater that I might be able to help you out with, certainly stick them down below and I'll do the best I can. Keeping in mind that I'm just some guy that bought one off eBay, stuck it in the caravan. That's my level of expertise, so don't expect too much from me. But more than happy to, you know, if you've got any issues, want to talk about anything, whatever, stick it in the comments below. And certainly if there's anybody else that feels like fielding those questions or comments, uh, it's got some experience, jump on as well and, and help out. That's what we're here for. So Tim, Steve, uh, anybody else looking? Mike, sorry I've spent a bit of your money lately. I apologize, mate. Hopefully yeah, you'll get those chairs and you'll enjoy those. And Matt, thanks, mate, for watching. I didn't realize you were, you were on board. So I'll talk to you on the radio soon, Matt. The big question is, is it worth the 210 bucks, 211 bucks that I spent on the diesel heater to put in the caravan? Yeah, absolutely. It's pretty easy to install. I made the install a little bit more challenging for myself by putting the controller at the side of that cabinet. If you're happy to run some wires and stick it somewhere else, that's the easiest part of the job. Cutting a hole in your floor of your caravan, again, not that hard. If I had the right tools, would have made it much easier. If I just had the hole saw, and just working with that jigsaw underneath the fridge, which is a little bit of a challenge, but that's something I bought on myself. The, the biggest challenge I found was where to locate it, as far as space goes, and where I wanted to get the, where I wanted to put the fuel tank. I was considering putting the fuel tank on the draw bar. I was considering mounting it at the back on the rear bar. I don't like hanging anything off the back of my caravan. I've already got a spare wheel there, and you know I just like to keep the weight evenly distributed. So I wasn't really happy with any of those options. I was considering under the caravan. Uh, because I wanted to get it out of the sun and out of the elements, but obviously that wasn't ideal because how was I going to fill it? I did look at the option of getting a different fuel tank, possibly a steel fuel tank, mounting that on the draw bar. But at the end, sticking it in the boot was just the best option. Already had the hole there for the drain hole. It's out of the weather, it's out of the way. It allowed me to put that fuel pump right at the front, which is away from the bed and close enough to the fuel tank. I've seen these for around about $100, $160. Down in the description, I'm gonna put a link for the seller that I bought mine from. Again, had it in a few days, in under a week. Was really happy there. I bought the specific kit with the twin silencers for the exhaust. Uh, I wanted the splitter because I've partially got in mind that I'm gonna use that splitter. I'm gonna have one outlet staying in the caravan as per a normal install. But I'm also thinking about putting the T-piece in that comes as part of the specific kit that I bought and putting a hole to the outside of the van so I can actually heat up my annex in winter. So I think that'd be bloody brilliant. That might come later, it might not. I'm not sure whether I'll get around to that. And I also went with that specific controller because it's got the readout, it looks nicer, and it gives you a lot more control. If you get an error, you can see the error messages on the screen, and then it, lets you, it basically lets you diagnose any issues with the unit itself which I did initially, when I plugged it all in, I hadn't connected up the pump and it went into an error mode and it showed me error 04, I think it was, which allowed me to look it up and it basically said, no, it's your pump. So, connected it up, away we go. If you just got one of those rotary, rotary dial ones, it's gonna work just as well. It's not gonna have a temp gauge. I don't know whether you can have a remote control, but you're not gonna have that level of control that you've got if you go with the LCD screen. You're not going to see that information uh, and you're not going to see the error codes, etc., like that. So, I really like that one. I did mean to buy a kit with remote control, I just bought the wrong kit, um, so I didn't get the one with remote control, but I'll pick that up later on. Advice is buying these. I've seen them range anywhere from about $160. I'll put a link down in the description to eBay to the cheapest one I can find and to this one that I bought off 
the seller that I got it from. I don't think he was one of those guys that lists himself as being Australian, it's actually in China, and then you've got to wait three weeks for something to turn up. So overall, very, very, very happy with this, especially on the low setting, just letting it tick along using half an amp uh, to go. Uses stuff all diesel. You know, I think the, the 10 litre diesel is gonna easily get me more than a week's use, I think, for you know several hours a day. And it's gonna use bugger all battery, even in overcast days like it is today. I think you can see that. It is completely overcast up there. We're making enough solar to keep that ticking over and it's not costing us anything. Obviously at night time we're gonna be using power from the batteries, but we've got 260 amps there, not an issue. The place where I installed is not ideal, but I am happy enough with it. I am going to insulate underneath that fridge just to try and you know get some separation of the heat from the cooling of the fridge, but overall I don't think it's gonna to be too much of an issue. Last weekend I had this running for two days straight, just had it on low, just let it run, got back in the caravan, toasty, toasty warm. It was, uh, you know, something around 26 degrees. Just because I wanted this well and truly tested before I went away, I've tested it for shorter periods and I thought, you know what, I need to, I need to test this for a long period before I go away camping. So I've had it on for two days straight, ran without an issue, no problems at all. The other thing I'm gonna do is stick a CO2 monitor in there on alarm in the caravan itself. In theory, it shouldn't be an issue because the engine side of it versus the heating side of it uh, is separated. So you've got your inlet coming into the engine and your exhaust, they're both on the outside of the van. And then the intake uh, for the heating element, which is on the back of the unit itself, and then obviously that just pushes coal there across the heating element and warms it up. So there is a separation from the engine side and the heating side of it as well. In theory, you shouldn't be getting any exhaust or fumes or anything like in the van, unless you're like me and you've actually set the exhaust up near, <laughs> near a vent near your door or something like that. Uh, so keep that in mind, but these are very, very cheap and it doesn't hurt to have $15, $20 insurance in a CO2 alarm uh, in the caravan. So I'm gonna go and pick up one of those from Bunnings. Might do that this afternoon or tomorrow and slap that in somewhere somewhere there as well, just for a little peace of mind. So that's it guys, thanks very much for stopping by. Cold outside, starting to rain. I'm going to get the warm caravan. Catch you on the next one.